All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> That's always good to see your faces. Um, as Jody and I were driving in today, uh, we were praying about what the Lord wanted to do. And um, Jody heard the words, love is in the air. And that's all we got, right? No idea what that meant. I spoke to Helena about it, and she goes, okay, you can talk about it. I have no idea, you know, butterflies in the stomach. I don't know what to say. Love is in the air, all right? But uh, I should know better because uh, I've been in this situation many times before, and the Lord has unfolded it in the last hour or so, and I've got pages of notes that I'd like to share. It's an interesting message. It's a great message. Um... But I've only just received it. So if it comes across clumsily, please forgive me. I'm going to try and deliver it as best I can. But love is in the air, right? Love is actually truly in the air. And as Helena spoke about in the beginning, God is closer to us than the air that we breathe. He's very, very, very close to us, far closer to us than you may realize and than you do actually realize. All right? And he's there and he's waiting and he is love. So when love is in the air, he is in the air and he's closer to you than you realize. The invitation, though, is that he's right here. He's right here. Many of us know that he's there. Many of us know that he is that close. But many of us haven't received his love in our hearts. We know that he loves us. Yeah, of course, we all know the word. We know that he loves us, but we haven't experienced that love. And very often we wonder, when am I going to actually feel that love? Why do I not feel that love? Maybe I'll feel it someday in the future. Maybe I need some healing, maybe I need some deliverance. Possibly true. But he is right here and he is waiting. And it's far easier to receive him and that love than you realize. That's what he wanted me to share. Um, we've spoken about the heart so many times, many, many, many times. I almost begin every every message that way. We've spoken about the heart, and this again is a message about the heart. It always keeps coming back to the heart, right? Now, last time, for those of you that joined us, last time we were talking about how the heart can get locked up and how the heart can imprison you spiritually, because of the damage that it's suffered, because of the pain and the suffering that it's suffered, the heart can lock things out. It can even lock God out. Okay? It can lock His love out of your life. So if you are wondering, why do I never feel the love of God? I would put it to you that it's highly possible that your heart has rejected the love of God. Your heart could be so damaged and in so much pain... Is just chosen to defend itself against everything and locked out the love of God. Okay? Unfortunately, there's a good and a bad side to that, right? The good news is that it's the love of God that can heal the heart from its present condition. Alright? The heart is locking out the one thing that it truly needs to be healed and restored. Right? And the heart doesn't know it. The heart doesn't realize that. The heart is only doing what it knows to do, and that is to keep things out. All right? Especially if you've been hurt. And even more especially if you think God has hurt you. All right? If you have ever been through an experience in which you've thought God has let you down, or God has led you into suffering, or God has done anything of that sort, your heart will blame Him for that. It will blame him for bad experiences and pain. And for that reason, it will lock him out. So the heart's damaged, it's hurt. But what it really needs is the love of God. And here's the good part too. Despite the fact that the heart locks God out, it may be even partially. I'm, 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 I'm not making assumptions here. I don't know who this is true for and who it's not. But the heart will make its own decision about what it wants to do with the love of God. But you have the capacity to choose on behalf of your heart. Your heart will do whatever it wants to do, whatever it thinks needs to be done. But you can also choose. Alright? So we sit there wondering, why do I not feel the love of God? It's because your heart is rejecting that love. Alright? Because God never withholds His love. And He will never withhold His love from you. Alright? That is a very cruel and unusual thing to do. He would never do that. 
If you don't feel his love and the power of his love, it's because your heart has rejected it. Your heart is holding it out. But the good news is that you can choose to receive that love. You can choose. And in doing so, you're going to have to go up against your heart and your heart's going to resist. Your heart's going to say, no, what are you doing? We can't do this. We can't have that. We can't open ourselves up to God. All right? And it, be, it, it, it boils down to an issue between you and your heart. Okay? You have the final say. You have the choice. Do you let the love of God in? All right? So it's very much like a dam wall, right? It can be so full of water on one side, but it can be completely dry and dead on the other side, right? And very often that's what our hearts are like, right? We need that water to come through the damn wall. And I don't know, you know, we've seen it in movies, we've seen it so many times. When the damn wall starts to crack, it starts with a trickle, it starts with a leak, and then, you know, then it starts springing a bigger leak, and then it starts shooting out, and the hole gets bigger and bigger, and eventually the damn wall breaks and the water just gushes in. When you, uh, and there's a point to what I'm just saying, the point is this. If you have trouble receiving the, heart, the, the love of God, you don't click a switch and it simply comes in. All right? Allow just a little bit of it in. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Everyone can do that. Just a little bit. See, the thing is, once, you, once your heart gets a taste of that love, it's going to want more. It's still going to be cautious. It's still going to be weary. But it's going to want more. And it's going to that crack's going to open and it's going to open a little bit more and more and more and more of his love will seep into your heart. And that love, as it comes in, is going to start gushing in, right? And as it gushes in, it's going to start touching things in your heart that need his love. It's going to start touching things that need healing, that need correction. It's going to start breaking down demonic structures, It's going to start touching things that need to be healed, restored, redeemed. Right? The important thing to to realize about the love of God, very often, and I'm guilty of this, very often I've just assumed, oh, it's just mushy feelings. Okay, it's nice to feel, but not necessarily, really. There's a job to be done, let's do it. Right? Actually, that's the way a lot of guys think. There's a job to do, let's do it. We don't have time for mushy feelings. Right? And we dismiss the love of God. We dismiss it. We acknowledge that it's there, but we dismiss it. But here's the important thing to realize. The love of God serves a purpose. It does things that nothing else can do. We need it. We need His love and we need it in our hearts so that our hearts can be redeemed and restored. Because again, so many times we've spoken about this, the heart is a gateway to God. All right. That's why Yeshua says in, in Revelation 3, Open the door and I will come in and dine with you. The door being your heart. All right? What we've also spoken about is that sometimes that door can be hard to open. We want Yeshua to come in. We want him to dine with us. But that door just won't open. It opens from the inside. We know that too. Yeshua is telling us to open it. All right? He can't open it from his side. We have to open it from our side. But sometimes, try as we might, we just can't open it. And that's the beautiful thing about the love of God. When you allow the love of God into your heart, it's going to start clearing up some of the obstacles and some of the rubbish in the way of that door. All right? It's going to make that door easier to open. All right? Last time, again, we spoke about how the heart can imprison you because of bad beliefs and all sorts of rubbish that that limit the way you can believe and the way you trust. And when you're limited in the way you believe and trust God, you're limited in your walk and in the things you can do. You're limited in the, in the spiritual life that you can live. All right? These limits can be broken down, if not entirely removed, by the love of God if you allow that love into your heart. That love is very powerful, but it's only powerful once you let it into your heart. There's very little it can do from outside of your heart. Okay? The love of God is capable of dealing with many issues in your heart. It can transform you. It can change you in ways you have no idea. All right? It is a choice. 
You must be born again. John chapter 3 says, in the first three, four verses. Absolutely. And you must get to see God, the Holy Spirit, when he comes into you and dwells in your heart. Amen. Amen. One thing, um, there's, a, there's a few reasons why we sometimes reject the love of God. Very often we think we don't deserve it. Right? So we, uh, it's, it's a sort of a form of punishment, a form of self-punishment. We think, no, we'll let that love in after we've reached the stage where we think we're good enough, where we think we deserve it. Okay? We blame ourselves for things God doesn't blame us for. We condemn ourselves. We bring the guilt on ourselves. So when the love of God presents itself, we say, no, sorry, I don't deserve you. I'll come back to you later. All right? Another reason we fear the love of God is because we fear losing control. Right? What if we allow the love of God into our hearts and then we start doing crazy stuff and start saying crazy things? All right? Of course that's not true. God would never let you into, into that space. All right? But it's, there, is, there's, there is a fear, a very real fear of losing control. We want control at all costs. And what this comes back down to is a trust issue. All right? It's a trust issue. Do you, if you let him into your life and, and you let his love into your heart, do you trust him with that space you've given him, the space you've, you've given your heart? You have to trust him. Amen. Um, there are many, many reasons why we sometimes reject the love of God. And, the, and here's the thing too. Again, we've spoken about the mind and the heart so many times. In your mind, you may think, reject the love of God. Why on earth would I do that? I wouldn't do that. That's a ridiculous thing to do. Okay, And I acknowledge that. It's true. In your mind, you know that's not how things are supposed to work. But it's your heart that's rejecting Him. And your, mind, and your heart operates independently of your mind. All right? Now, if you, if you really take the time out and you focus on your heart and see what it thinks, you will know why it's rejecting the, the love of God. It may not be rejecting it outright, but at a minimum it may simply be holding it back. It may be cautious, you know, not, in, not allowing itself to be fully immersed in the love of God. Only you know what your heart thinks. Only you are capable of finding out what your heart thinks. And once you know what that reason is, you can make a choice to deal with that. Okay? You can make a choice to deal with that. You can choose to accept that reason and to override it and to make the decision anyway to receive the heart of God. Uh, it's not the heart of God, sorry, the love of God. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So what I'm saying is this, right? Very often we kick back and we wonder why, why, don't, why do I not feel the love of God? It's not God doing that. It's us. It's our hearts. All right? But we can very quickly turn that around with a conscious, intentional decision. Sometimes it takes time. Like I said, it's like a dam wall breaking. A dam wall doesn't break instantaneously. Sometimes it can take hours, if not days. But the point is, do this. Consciously choose to allow the love of God into your heart. It could take you hours. It could take you days. It could take you minutes. I don't know. But do it until the dam breaks. Let the love of God in. We've been, we're, again, we've spoken about the heart so many times and the many issues that it can have. If you want to fix your heart with the, the, the way the ministries of this world want to fix your heart, and there's some good ministries out there, it can take you a long time and a lot of money, Right? But God has a better way here, all right? And He wants to do it, and He wants to do it His way, and He wants to do it quickly and powerfully, and completely and utterly accurately, without harming a single hair on your head, all right? And that is by His love in your heart. But you have to choose to let it in, all right? Um, so, yeah, the love of God is not just about fuzzy feelings, it, it does serve a purpose. And if we don't receive the love in our hearts, we're actually not we're allowing ourselves, we're denying the purposes that come with that love. Okay? And if we deny the purposes that that love uh, fulfills, then we're not going to get very far, guys. 
God needs to do stuff in us and there's stuff that only his love can do. And it, it, it has to happen in the heart. And when that stuff takes place, man, my goodness, I don't know. I can't imagine what is going to happen. All right? So God is love. And when we receive his love, we truly receive him. Um, I think that's about everything I've got. I'm going to end with this, right? It's up to you to accept and receive the love of God and how quickly that happens. And when you do accept it and receive it, you can have as much of it as you want. Okay? You can step into as much of it as you want and as much of it as you need. He holds nothing back from any of us. And I think it's very crucial at this point in time on our journey. All right? So thank you for hearing me. (laughs) Thank you for listening to me. Elena, I'm going to pass that back to you now.